Yo, what's up? It's now noon and I'm going to drive the Puckster on a long trip today. So I feel like I'm done with it. I still have the banana box test, but I will do that with the XL version, not this one. So today I will drive from Oslo, well, Alnabru, to Salpsborg, where this one is manufactured. It's made in Norway. So that is 110 kilometer long trip. So it should be a piece of cake because I tested the rain before and all that, but um, yeah. So I will explain a little bit. There, there could be a small limit in motor temperature, that's it. But other than that, we could just hammer it and of course take breaks as we need and so on. So I've charged uh, the packs to 100%. So let's just get going because it will take a while to get there. So I reset the trip meter and uh, if you look here, the temperature, okay, we have 100%. This one, the temperature in the motor is now 22 degrees Celsius. It will rise and Paxa told me that it can withstand until 160 degrees Celsius. Once we hit 160, it will start throttling the power. Well, I said the, the torque, but we will take some breaks. We will stop and shoot some videos on that. So hopefully we will not hit 160 degrees. It's no big deal anyway, because um, actually, the earlier models of the Paxter, they put a fan at the motor to cool it down. I'm going to show you where it is. It's down here. You see, it's just passively cool. Uh, but they found out that, they, because they have all the logs, and they found out that all the customers who did deliveries, they never ever triggered the fan. So they realized that people who dr drive deliveries, they start and stop all the time to deliver parcels or whatever. So that means that there is no need for that active cooling. But today, because we are doing a continuous run, we might need it. And I also have to avoid motorways today. So we'll take some smaller routes. That will also be a little bit challenging, but it should be a fun ride. now between Lillestrøm and Fetsund and this is the scary part we have 80 zone but it's not uh, classified as a motorway so I'm still allowed to drive here but it's a little bit scary but fortunately we have two lanes in each direction so I could just hug the right lane but the one concern I have is the the temperature in the motor because you see it's close to 100 well it was 100 right before I parked now it's down to 97 and we have to go uphill and it would be tempting for me to drive here, but I'm not allowed to drive here. And the bicycles and pedestrians will be driving here, so I'm not allowed to drive there, unfortunately. So I have to just crawl myself up and hope that it won't overheat. <laughs> so brace yourself. Uh, what the heck? I was worrying too much. We are on the top of the hill now, and only 105 degrees Celsius in the pack. I mean, sorry, on the, on the motor. So the motor heat uh, it cools down quite fast. Just after a couple of minutes, it drops by five degrees Celsius. So it's, it's a good thing that the motor is quite exposed. Oh, bus, we have to yield for the bus. We are now at Teig. Just have to stop here for a little bit. R relax, rest my hands. And uh, yeah, Teig is somewhere in the middle between uh, uh, Lillestrøm and Mysen. Yeah, we're getting close to Mysen now. So, so far so good. And you know, this road is kinda, well, actually it's not that busy. But what I like is that there are lots of these bus stops 
So whenever I get one car behind me, I just quickly pull over the bus stop, let them pass, and then I keep going. So it works great. And this one is the Highway 22. So uh, not too busy, but let me show, me show you the stats now. You see, we have driven 47 kilometers so far, and I have to look in the app, and you can see that uh, according to the app, we have 59%. So we have to drive 110 kilometers total, but uh, at Musen in about 20, 30 kilometers, hopefully we can get to charge there. And I also tried to rest the motor a little bit. Uh, it was, yeah, it was hovering around 125 degrees for a while. And you see, after just five minutes, it's down to 113 already. So, yes, we have to keep going. No time to chit chat. We have finally arrived at Müssen and uh, the plan was to charge here but there is a small problem because I don't know if this is the charging station uh, according to Google it's type 2 and I only have the Shuko uh, plug so I can't use these maybe if I had a type 2 to type 1 cable it would work but man, I need Shuko maybe there's an old Shuko somewhere here Okay, I have to drive around, but this is not going to work, this one. All right, what a bummer. I was planning on stopping the news and to chill a bit and charge up. Even though I don't think I need to charge because I think I have enough juice to go all the way. But uh, a little break would be nice. So uh, we're gonna head for uh, Rakkestad now. Fredericks, no, not Fredericks, no, Salzburg. So maybe I can ask for some juice at the gas station, just, just for sanity, about half an hour top up. This thing can only charge about one kilowatt into the battery after charging loss, so it's not that fast. We are now at Rakkestad and we are 20 kilometers away from uh, Salzburg where um, the Parkster is. But we have 20% left and that means it's cutting in a little bit close. So I just need a Shuko. So yeah, the, the problem actually nowadays in the modern world is that um, the charging stations doesn't have Shuko. Charging stations are equipped with uh, Chadmo or uh, CCS or Type 2. So I have to find Shuko somewhere. Just need about half an hour just to be safe. Or I could drive really slow. So, okay, we have to figure out something. I also try to look for other options. Let's say gas station or something, but nah. Okay, let's just keep driving for a little bit more and see what we find out. Uh, I'm getting a little bit worried now. We have 14% left on the battery and 14 kilometers left to Parkster. It's in that direction. Uh, we are, it seems like we are spending 1% per kilometer now. So that means we could run out of juice. And I don't want to run out of juice around here. So uh, maybe I should ask people nearby here if they could just lend me just a little bit. I need 15 minutes to top up just so I can have one two percent margin. Then I'll feel way safer. Uh, okay, let me just ask these houses over there. Oh, what is this one? Hmm. Okay, the final run now. 14 kilometers left. The highway 22 here is quite busy. It wasn't that calm as earlier today over there before Musen. So, um, 
That's why I prefer not to run out of juice. But I called Parkster, asked them about when does this car shut down, and they said, well, it depends on voltage, so the, the lower cell and all that. And that's why I figured that we should have enough now. And in case it runs out, they have a trailer so they can uh, grab me. But if it runs out, it will probably be just a couple of kilometers before. But we are not counting on it. So let's just go for it. Final run now. Woo! We have finally arrived here. Yeah, Puxter. This is the Puxter factory. The only one, I think, in Norway. They had an Enes there, yeah. The only factory here. So this Puxter was born here. And I came here with 8% left. And they're, they're the cool guys, by the way, at Puxter. <laughs> so I asked them. Uh, well, it was a mistake that they didn't provide me with this cable. Because if I had this one, you see, it's a type 2 to type 1. Uh, many people with all leaf, they have this because if you want to charge at Fortum or whatever, when you need AC, you need this one. So if I had it, then I wouldn't have to do some clumsy charging, whatever. But okay, but we are here. <laughs> so the box that did it. So I don't know if you guys want to see this. The motor has already... No, this is a controller. Uh, battery, okay, uh, let me show you. Um, yeah, trip claims 117.5. I think I did some detour or whatever. So the shortest way should be 110. So yeah. And then, yeah, that's the odometer. Uh, let me show you the rest here. That, yeah, I never reached the max speed there. I cruise at around 40, 50 kilometers per hour. So the motor is already at 92 degrees Celsius. Battery is at 50 volts. I'm not sure when it cuts down, but we, we are good. This was oof, an achievement done and uh, i feel my butt is hurt now but i'm not butt hurt <laughs> because this type of seat has been made for easy entry and exit it's like a well it's like a motorcycle you know so uh, for long trips it's not very comfortable but this car was never made for long trips i just did something a little bit unusual <laughs> but i think these guys want to show me around at the Paxter factory oh they also drive tesla mm. we're now inside the Paxter factory and it's late in the afternoon now so fortunately everyone has gone home and it's nice and quiet here so the Paxter started life with the chassis this is a steel chassis right and do they do any rust protection yep. With oil? Oil, uh-huh. And it's been painted black. Yeah, yeah. Powder, powder coating. Pa powder coating, okay. And then over here we have battery packs. This is the, um, the 14 cell. The one I was using was the 16 cell. So this is the 8.2 kilowatt hour. And you also have the one with the uh, 9.2 kilowatt hour. And we have, ah, so it's just empty here. It's supposed to be two extra cell here. And each cell, I mean, each is a module or a cell? Or? Yeah, this is a cell. This is okay. This is a cell. 180 amp hours. Okay, and they're connected together. And also, you notice that. Well, actually, we can see it over here better. This uh, this heat. Uh, okay, maybe you can pull it out, please. And so the pat battery pack has a heat. Uh, what do you call it? The heat heater mat. Heater mat. Uh, how uh, how many uh, watt is the mat? Uh? Approximately 200 watts. So only 200. So it's, it has a 200 watt battery heater. Yeah. Yeah. With all, only heating at really low temperatures. Mm -hmm. And you also have this styrofoam. Yes. On the side and bottom and also top or. Uh, yeah, it's another mat on the top you see here. So it's it's actually heat insulated, but oh, okay there. But it doesn't overheat. No. Because 
the power output and the charging is so low so there's actually no overheating and no no active cooling but in winter it will stay nice and warm around uh, how many degrees 10 10 and above so very nice for the battery so it works great in norway even so that's the battery pack and i did over here they are uh, balancing it but it's been assembled and then balanced so that's the battery pack and then over here we have the motor oh yeah the motor the, dri the drive chain so here's the drive train uh, how powerful is this motor uh, we 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 uh, output around uh, six kilowatts. Six kilowatts. Uh, we, uh, to the regulation of moped, so it can't be more than six. Uh, for the motorcycles, we output output around eight. Okay. Eight kilowatts. So yeah. six kilowatts, and this is the um, this is the magnet brake. Yeah, yeah magnetic uh, brake. Okay, magnetic brake. So when you lift the the, the butt sensor. Yeah. It will seat, seat switch when it's uh, opening you step out it uh, automatically uh, activates mm -hmm. and also connected to throttle so when you use throttle it's um, it open automatically so you don't it's, it's automated the, the parking brake uh, functionality okay great and there's also a differential here yep. and a reduction gear 10 to 1 reduction gear so that's the drivetrain and then here we have the chassis with the battery pack mounted on and some some of the components yeah that that's the onboard charger it's 1.2 kilowatt yeah. so I mean, everything can be customized if the customer wants more powerful they could do that but actually most customers they don't need more than this there's more than plenty enough but by the end of the day they charge it overnight and then the next day it's good to go and also the suspension by the way yeah so you have the your disc brake and we can see on this one here. Yep. So we have drum brake in the rear. Yep. And how often do you have to service the drum brake? Never. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a really long life uh, brakes, and this is actually also the new system. We we have upgraded the brakes to to have much uh, more resistance to wear because it's a really hard use when you do delivery. It's full throttle, full brake all day. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then front has the disc brake. Yeah. And this is the suspension, like... Uh, Double A-arm. Is this like ATV or more? Yeah. Same system as uh, on, on many ATVs. Huh. Okay, nice, nice. And then if you keep uh, going, now we st start seeing some buttons and screen getting on. So it's like a... This is like a, a production line from there and then you see on each side you have parts that has been added um, and then the finished product ends up over here so let's see what else now we start adding some plastic here right yeah thermoformed plastics um, so it's and it's uh, true colored so so everything is uh, the same color so when we deliver it in red it's red uh, all the way through uh -huh. so the one that from Posten yeah. the postal they use the red yeah red one okay nice and um, let's see over there and then uh, we keep going here now we get the seat on yes yeah, so we see the front window also heated with the glass part uh, also with a special uh, plastic um, front screen with a coating so this is really strong and not uh, uh, you have won't have scratches and um, oh. This one is the test bench with a rolling uh, thing. And yeah. over here, you guys test it for, uh, for, for performance and stuff. Yeah, so we do a, a really hard test run here. So we have uh, a system where we output uh, the, the, the power and the, um, the currents and everything. So we test all electric systems here, running it at full power for maybe 20 minutes up to a half an hour. And we continue um, to, to check battery and voltages in batteries, temperatures on every connections and stuff like that, and make a report of this to, to completely check the system. Wow, nice. Okay, and then eventually they end up here. Uh, what is this station? Just 
Uh, this is just uh, preparing before shipment. So this is after test drive. The, the vehicle come back, they uh, wash things, they're checking that uh, torques have been uh, double checked that torques uh, for the um, uh, like wheels and front suspension things that is important will will be double checked and we, and we do the final uh, finish before um, wrapping up and, and shipping. Hmm. Cool, and I think that's pretty much it. Over there, there is a storage, and they prepared for for yeah, sending it out. So um, yeah, that's the whole uh, factory, pretty much. So that was pretty cool, Paxter. So you know, there is actually uh, possibilities for Paxter to maybe in the future make an electric ATV because they already have the platform for making it anything. Whatever comes about here is customizable. So what do you guys think? Huh? Wouldn't it be cool to have an electric ATV? And you can always have more powerful onboard charger. You can also have all-wheel drive. Everything is customizable. Yeah. <laughs> but this is not going to be the last video about Paxter. There might be one or a few more coming up, uh, but maybe not right away. So that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, Thank you for watching and talk to you later.